This, this is all Jonathan Morrison's fault, kinda. I'm sure you know who he is, but on the off chance you don't, he makes some of the best looking and just plain best videos on YouTube. Anyway, he switched to two by one video early, and if memory serves, he helped get Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, to do the same. Watching how their stuff looked on iPhone 10, 10s, and 10R, and other modern flagship phone displays, going edge to edge right along with those displays, rather than stopping pillar box short or getting clipped top and bottom, just looked like the future. I made the switch around New Year, and here's how I did it. At least in Final Cut Pro 10. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. Film things first. We're still shooting in 16x9. We frame for 2x1, but the extra pixels means I can move things around in the edit to make sure everything is exactly where I want it to be. A little up, a little down, nudge, never a problem. Once it's shot, I import it into Final Cut Pro 10, just like I've always done, just like you would with any footage. When you set up your project though, instead of the default 16x9, you want to choose 2x1. I'm shooting and editing in 4K, so for me that means switching from 3840 by 2160 to 4096 by 2048 I use that because it's right there in the selector, and their nerd in me loves that it's literally 4K or 4000 pixels wide. If you want a different resolution, for example, if you want to stick with 3840, you can manually enter 1920. Or if you're shooting in 1080p, you can enter 1920 by 960 If you're already shooting in 8K or high, then I'm just going to assume you're a Grammaton Cleric level editor and just keep on moving on. Once you have your project set up, drag your clips or the first of your clips onto the timeline and start laying down your video. Now, if you're shooting in 16x9 like me, you'll need to refit it first. Just go to the video inspector, look for spatial conform, type at the bottom, and change the drop down from fit to fill. That'll instantly scale it up and knock those pillar boxes right out. If you framed everything perfectly, that's it. If not, you can either use the video inspector and enter a different Y position to nudge it up or down, or you can use the transform tool to position it manually. Since Final Cut don't snap though, once you're happy, go back to the video inspector and make sure X is set to zero. If you've got multiple clips to assemble on timeline, just copy the first clip, the one you've already gone to all the trouble to set up, and then option paste it, that's option command V, onto all the other clips. That'll spare you having to fill and adjust all of them and keep everything consistent. If some or all of the clips are different, you can still do that and tweak as needed afterwards and it'll probably still save you some cycles. Same thing for any b-roll you add. Basically anything you add that's 16x9 or narrower that you don't want to pillar box and don't care if it's clipped on the top or bottom. Then you can just go ahead and edit your video the way you've always gone ahead and edited your video and you should be just fine. With one exception. Not all third-party effect plugins are dynamic, and that means not all of them will fill the 2x1 frame either. If they don't have any background or fill elements, it may not matter. If they do though, those elements won't reach all the way to both sides and that's hella ugly. I've only ever encountered this with titles and title-like effects, but it can still be a pain. Sure, you can avoid using those clips or ping the creator or company who makes them and see if you can get them updated, but if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you can also open the effects in Motion, Apple's Motion Graphics Editor, tweak them to 2x1 and save them back out. I'm still trying to figure out Motion, but if you're already a pro, you can make any effect do pretty much anything you want it to do, pretty much anytime you want it. If you can't contact the creator or company and don't want to dive into Motion, you can also drop in the effect, tune it the way you like it, and then turn it into a compound clip and scale the compound clip up by 112.47%, or just 113% if you want to keep it nice and round and quick. If you don't make it into a compound clip first, the scaling you apply to the effect will also apply to the clip underneath it, punching it in and out as the effect starts and stops, which in most cases won't be what you want. So yeah, it adds some complexity all its own, but at least it works. So I asked Jonathan for his advice, and he was kind and gracious enough to provide it. So 2 to 1 may have taken over YouTube recently, but it's actually not new. And TV shows you may have already seen actually shoot in 2 to 1. Stranger Things Season 1, Ozark, a series of unfortunate events, and even a movie, Jurassic World. So for me, the extra width you get with 2 to 1 not only looks great on smartphones, but it's just a little more fun to be creative. Now, Renee showed you how to take a 16 by 9 video and convert that into 2 to 1, but if you can, use an external monitor like Small HD, which will give you guidelines, because if you can compose for that shot in the camera, that will absolutely give you the best results. Hey, thank you so much, Jonathan, and please check him out at youtube.com slash TLD. Now, if Adobe Premiere is your editor of choice, I can't help you, but Skillshare can. They have a ton of video editing courses for Final Cut and Premiere, including video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2018 for beginners. But they also have over 20,000 other classes in design, photography, technology, and yeah, video editing. And premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the high quality classes, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love, just better. 
Visit the link in the description and the first 500 of you get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Act now and start learning today. Thanks Skillshare and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Rendering out the video works just the same as well. Pick your target and start the export, then upload it to YouTube and enjoy the fresh, clean, cinematic look. And yeah, I know not everyone loves 2x1, but I'm a true believer. It doesn't just look great on modern flagship phones. It looks wider screen even when you're watching it on a 16x9 TV with even the slightest of letterboxes. It looks like the movies. At least that's what I think. I'd love to know what you think, including any 2x1 tips you've picked up and any other topics you'd like to see me cover in these how-to shows. So hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.